In fact, on my way in here, I met a Costa Rican park ranger who told me a very sad story about a husband and wife who came hiking in here not so long ago. They'd only been on the trail for about an hour and they decided to leave it and go into the forest. And their wife twisted her ankle. Well, only an hour from the ranger station, naturally, her husband set off back for help. But he made a critical error. He forgot to note down exactly where she was. It took them three weeks to find her. By then, she was dead. It's about six o'clock in the morning and the sun is already hot enough to start making me sweat. But it's great to wake up in the jungle. You feel fresh and alive and everything around you is just buzzing with activity. It's also good to use a camp like this because it's very easy to put up and to strike. Fantastic, look at that boa up there. Now that's a constricting snake, he's not going to give me a poisonous bite. Mind you, there are plenty of other snakes around here you've got to be mighty careful of, particularly in amongst the leaf litter. That's where the deadly fertile ants likes to hide. That's the one the locals fear most. So whenever I'm stepping around logs, I step on them, not over them, just in case he's just underneath. Well, here we are, base camp. Took me a bit longer to get here than I expected. Haha, <laughs> my chance to get my own back. There's the crew. Look at them, sweethearts. Here are the box nets that they'll be sleeping in. And as you can see, they like to travel really light. Let's have a look over here. This is the living area to the camp. Oh yes, as I guessed, they're playing backgammon while I've been slogging through the rainforest. Lovely. Now here's a top tip for the rainforest. If you're going to go into the jungle, go with a doctor. This is Dr. John Walden. He's a specialist in tropical medicine with over 30 years of experience in the Amazon basin. Hi, John. Hi, Ray. How about a beer? Sounds perfect. Trust the doctor to come to the rescue. There you go. Great. We all ready? Yeah. Good. When many people think of the tropics, they think of tropical diseases and they conjure up thoughts of the classic, the obligatory photo of a fellow whose scrotum was so big he had to carry it around in a wheelbarrow. And if not that, then something horribly disfiguring, something mutilating, such as Jaws, Gangosa. Then there are things, things out there that can get you, such as the much maligned Kanjidu. This is a little matchstick-sized catfish has the nasty habit of swimming up in your urethra when you urinate underwater. You know, if you, if you live long enough and travel far enough, about everything your mother ever told you comes true, you know. If, if you have the misfortune of having this actually enter your urethra, it's definitely not a good thing to have. A surgery uh, most likely would be required. The way you keep from having this problem is, one, don't urinate under the water, and two, wear a tight bathing suit. We have a number of really aggressive spiders in, in the American tropics, uh, such as the banana spider. Uh, that's actually my foot and the spider that bit me. I did a very foolish thing, and I didn't shake out my boots. Uh, and I stuck my foot in, and that's what was waiting for me. And, the most exquisite pain I've ever had in my life. I've actually passed two kidney stones in my life. This was infinitely uh, worse than, than that. I had a sensation in my left cheek as though it, it felt like when someone does that to you. But it was almost as though I had walked into a spider web or, or, or hair. Some of my hair was onto my face. And I kept brushing it away, you see. The venom was doing this. But by the next morning, I actually was fine and trekked for 12 hours the next day. So. By far the most important disease in the tropical world, by far, is malaria. This is a, a little uh, Chachi Indian girl who's in a coma. Uh, she has cerebral malaria, uh, and the child is uh, 
uh, near death. I, as I recall, the good news on this is that uh, through uh, intravenous uh, therapy, she, she actually lived. Malaria can look very much like uh, the flu. Uh, the diagnosis must be made rapidly uh, because you can go from being a sick to severe headache to, to confused to a coma to death uh, in, in short order. Fortunately, there are drugs that you can take. You can sleep in a mosquito net. Um, that's a very good thing. Because not only does a mosquito net uh, actually keep uh, mosquitoes from you, they tend to keep bats from, from biting you. Vampire bats uh, transmit rabies, for example, and, uh, and sleeping in uh, a mosquito net, uh, unless it's right up against you, uh, often will discourage the, uh, the bats from, from making contact with your uh, skin. And of course you have uh, snakes, you have ferritolants, you have bushmasters. The only thing I know to deal with snakes is this, is put a guide in front of you who was raised in the jungle, and if anyone can see the snake, that person will. You will not see the snake that's going to bite you. As far as treatment, if you can get out and get to some place where they can uh, give you appropriate high doses of antivenom, um, then that, that uh, is, is what must be done. Well, we've seen a number of uh, health problems that, that really, if, if you were the sort of person that wanted to dwell on these, uh, uh, you know, it could it sort of ruin your day. So there we go. Yes. Well, with all this base camp equipment, we could quite happily live in the jungle for months. But imagine a nightmare scenario of losing a rucksack, perhaps while crossing a stream, a situation that happens just too frequently. How could I cope with only the things I had about my person? Well, I'm not on a day hike now. I've got to survive here. And the first rule of survival is to stop, think about your situation, and make a plan. Anything but panic. My basic plan is to stop here for the night and make a camp. And I reckon this bit of rainforest is going to give me everything I need. Without a machete, my chances of survival would be slim. And an ordinary knife is no substitute. Lianas like this are the natural rope of the forest. And I'm going to take this little one to help me tie my shelter together. I'm going to leave the big one up there so that we don't denude the forest. The shelter I'm building works just like my tarp and hammock, with the bed to keep me off of the ground away from the creepy crawlies, and a big roof to keep the rain off. And I'm making that with this simple lattice work of poles and cross members made from lianas. These are fantastic materials, but they're so flexible of being able to use ordinary conventional knots, starting with a timber hitch and finishing here with a round turn and two half hitches. To thatch my shelter, I'm going to use these, the fronds from the sweeter palm. But I've got to be careful because the locals have told me that this is where you often find eyelash pit vipers. The reason I put the two layers of liana on is so that I can lock these palm fronds in place with their stem like that. Jungle streams like this one are absolutely stuffed with life. There's a good chance I'll be able to pick up an easy source of protein. And hopefully, my head net's going to prove it's got more than one use. There we go. 
go, that's the sort of thing I'm after. Freshwater crayfish and freshwater shrimp.